This is the demonstration for Module 8 in the 2010 upgrading class, and the purpose is to illustrate access services. Now in order to do that, we need to open up the Access Client program. And then we're going to create a new database. We don't have an existing one in AW Bikes that we want to work with. But we do have some templates. If we go to the sample templates area, we pick. And notice that many of these, or some of them anyway, have this web database name in them. We're going to pick one of those because those are databases that are already specifically designed to work well with access services. It doesn't mean that it has to be a web database. We can take a line of business things that have been created by power users in your own organizations and convert those as well. But in some cases there may be some things that need to be tweaked in order for it to work. So for our example, just to see how the process works, we're going to pick the contacts web database. I'm just going to leave it with the default name and click create. And Access will create a new database for me built on that template. So in the Contacts web database, we have a Getting Started page where we get some help information. There's even a couple of videos in here that are ooh-ah. Let's take a look at what's in here, though. If we go to the Contact card, okay, it shows us a blank one. Notice we have no, no employees in here yet, no contacts in our list. So if you go to the Contact card and click the Add New button, this button is really using a, a macro, VBA, is what's happening here so that it can open up another form on top. Notice this is a separate form. First name, let's put Alan Jackson in here. Um, I don't know, let's give, him, let's give him an email. Alan at awbikes.local Business phone, 111-555-1111 that's good enough. We'll click Save and New. Let's give Ben Burton one 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 five 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 two 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 two. Let's give it close. Just to give us an idea of how this works, that let us create a couple of contact records. And this contact card allows us to display each one of those and see all the details that go along with it in a, in a form type environment. Okay. Data sheet just shows us those entries in a list environment. The report center would allow us to pick different reports that could be run. Notice there they are. The phone book shows us the phone numbers that were entered. Printable labels. So, nice little database just for contact management. Let's say that we're ready to share this now. And in old days, what we would have done is probably just put this in a file share somewhere. And whatever a few people needed to get into it could get into it concurrently. And that was okay. As long as it was within just four or five people, that was usually not a problem. Access did not do security well, and it didn't scale up very well. So there could be uh, problems with keeping people out of data they weren't supposed to mess with, or problems with the data corrupting because too many people were trying to use it. There are also some size limitations in Access. None of that, however, is true with SharePoint. So if we click on the File menu up here, we again have a Share area, just like we did before in Visio. And notice that we have a couple of ways that we can go about this. Um, if we choose to share, we can choose right here to publish to access services. Now it has a compatibility checker here for us. And if you click that, it will go and look at your database. We have to close any of the forms and tables we have open already. Okay? And it tells us that the database is compatible with the web. That's because it was a web database. The template was designed for that. Now let's give it a server URL. we want to go to our individual student portals, not just to the root one. Notice the 
name of the site it's going to create is contacts, so it's showing us a full URL up here, including that new one. Yes, the database we've created is now going to create itself as a SharePoint web or a subsite. Uh, if we click the Publish to Access Services, it will now think for a minute, talk to that site collection, create a subsite. and take everything from the Access database and push it up there. Not just the tables like the old 2007 version would have, but also the forms, the reports, even simple macros will work there as well. So those buttons that were used to navigate to different parts of the database were there. Notice it tells us it's done, although the server may still be processing a little bit. I'll just click OK. Let's switch over to our browser. And let's refresh the page. And now it should show up here as a subsite on my navigation tab. Did it not refresh? There we go. See how contact shows up? Now if I click on it, I can still tell I'm in SharePoint because I get that nice little banner up at the top with my student menu and the I like it and all the tagging things. And then after it thinks for a moment, it renders this um, in SharePoint as it would have in the database. Now it does need a little cleanup. The layout of the buttons didn't come out quite as pretty as it did in Access. Notice though that the data came with it and the contact card helps me to work. Now this error that it's pointing out down here, if you analyze it closely, it tells it because a setup component is not installed. What it amounts to is that for the reports, the access reports to work in the browser, it uses SQL Server reporting services, and we don't have that installed in this farm. Uh, that's another whole topic about how that could be set up and integrated. That's kind of beyond what we're talking about. But if your farm is already configured to have that available to you, then publishing access, including the reports, is very, very easy and quick. Notice we did this in just a, two or three minutes. Notice the data sheet tab takes us and shows us that different view including the spreadsheet functionality we had here. The report center is not going to give us much helpful because again reports are going to require that SQL Server reporting services. But the database came up here and it does work. For instance if we wanted to add another new employee um, let's see let's add Connie Watson, Connie at awbikes.local, save and close. Notice it looks and adds, acts an awful lot like it did in the Access Client. If someone were to open up the Access Client, Notice Connie Watson is in here now. Yes, edits or reading can be done either from the client or from the browser. And it is pretty much fully functional. That is a really an amazing piece of engineering that's been done there that I was extremely impressed with. Again, this could be a game changer. There are many organizations that wind up with a lot of these access databases that got built by power users that become a problem for IT over time because of scalability and reliability and now those can many times be moved up into SharePoint completely and functionally uh, with probably a very minor amount of tweaking unless they've got really in-depth macros and VBA writing in them. So pretty cool.